On the 9th of September 2024, I gave a presentation at a Gaia Unlimited meeting uh, in uh, Leiden, uh, the Netherlands, and I thought that it might be of interest to a larger group, so I re-recorded the presentation uh, for a YouTube video, uh, and uh, I hope you find it interesting. Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Jardine, and for the last six years, I've been volunteering as a galactic cartographer for DPAC Coordination Unit 9. I typically produce maps for data releases and upon requests for special projects. I also make maps for a number of my own Gaia outreach projects. My degree is in pure mathematics and computer science, so I'm not a professional astronomer, but I seem to learn more about Gaia in every data release. This is going to be a short presentation very quickly describing how I make my maps and use them for public outreach. And I will touch briefly on Gaia Unlimited. If we just look at the raw data Gaia point cloud with more than a billion points or even a significant subset, mapping it is a bit like trying to map a sandstorm in the Sahara Desert. We need a way to extract interesting features and one way to do this is to extract features based on the density of a selection of stars. Fortunately, there are a large number of well-developed algorithms to do exactly this in medicine, where they are used to extract tissue density features from the point cloud created by an MRI scan. The MRI machine creates a series of slices that show point clouds representing tissue density. These density slices can be converted into 3D meshes given a dense density range. Uh, so here's an example of, uh, a brain, of the brain tissue. A key paper that applies these algorithms to astronomy is Bowie and Alves 2015, which produced a density map of OB stars from Hipparchus, effectively implementing an MRI scan of the Milky Way. The process starts with a point cloud that is fed into a function called a kernel density estimator. There are many of these to choose from, but the most common is the Gaussian estimator. You also need to supply a bandwidth value that essentially describes how much to smooth the data. A high bandwidth is very smooth and reduces detail. A low bandwidth is very detailed and may become chaotic. The estimator converts the point cloud into a scalar field that is typically defined at every point in a 3D grid. We can then feed this scalar field into a second function called the marching cubes algorithm along with a density value. This produces an isosurface of constant density, much like the contour lines that show common elevation on a topographic map. I could give an entire presentation on how to choose appropriate bandwidth and density values, so I won't discuss that today. Once you have several isosurface meshes, you can combine them together to form a top-down map, much like we can combine elevation meshes to form a terrestrial map. In fact, after experimenting with various color schemes, I've settled on a scheme similar to the one based on this map using density rather than elevation. Here's a detail of a one kiloparsec OB star density map based on Gaia DR3 uh, with the galactic center up. In my final maps, I usually overlay dust, star cluster, and H2 regions, all derived from Gaia DR3 as well. And I label OB associations, etc. Uh, here's a detail from a three kiloparsec um, uh, OB uh, star density map. In addition to the Gaia maps I've done for DPAC, I've created a series of nine DR3 map posters for general use with radii that range from 10 parsecs to 12 kiloparsecs. The 12 kiloparsec map also includes masers. These posters, as well as a document providing references, are available at the URL shown on this slide. I could really use some guidance from Gaia Unlimited 
about the reliability of these maps, especially towards the edges of the larger ones, or in dusty areas. I have tried to label dust obscure regions on some of my maps, but Gaia Unlimited should make that much more accurate. All of the meshes and the other data I use to create my maps are contained in a giant Blender file, which I have shared with my colleague Stefan Payne Wardener, who has created a model of the Milky Way. We collaborated on creating an animation uh, from Milky Way to Earth that combined his 3D model of the Milky Way with my 3D maps. It has received 130,000 views so far on YouTube, and Tinica used an excerpt in the Gaia 10th anniversary video. While I'm mentioning YouTube, I should also mention that Anton Petrov did a YouTube video specifically on my 10 Parsec map, which got 150,000 views. I think people are quite interested in nearby stars. I have a dream that just as school children can point out continents on a map of the Earth, that one day some significant group of people will be able to point out objects on a map of the local bubble, including the Hyades, Pleiades, and uh, Beehive Clusters, Scorpius OB2, the Taurus Colsack and Ophiuchus Dark Clouds, the Orion Eridanus Bubble, Gum Nebula, and so on. I've noticed that people learn a lot from games, so for many years I've been working on a series of board game prototypes based on Gaia data. Recently I've been play testing a game set in the local bubble region called Acrux. Acrux is what mathematicians would call a game played on a directed graph and what most people would call a train game. The game uses Hipparchus and Gaia parallax data to essentially build railway tracks between prominent stars in the local bubble region. And by playing the game, people learn about the properties of those stars, including spectral types, exoplanets, and more. I brought along the game prototype uh, to this meeting in case some evening a group would like to help me play test it and give me some feedback. Okay, now I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about my virtual reality app, uh, the Virtual Starship, which has now been released in the Meta App Lab, and I'll be demoing for interested people tomorrow. In many ways, uh, virtual reality and Gaia is a match made in the heavens. Gaia data is inherently 3D, and although I can reduce it down to top-down flat maps, we lose a lot when, when I do that. VR enables us to view 3D data in amazing new ways. The virtual starship has an elaborate navigation console that allows travel to 45 different Milky Way locations and displaying several types of maps at each location. Uh, creating the starship has been by far the largest cartography project that I've ever undertaken. VR also allows us to create environments that make it easy to connect the maps that Gaia gives us with the imagery from telescopes like VLT or the Webb Space Telescope. When you jump from one location to another in the Starship, there is an entertaining wormhole animation. The Starship also includes a galactic scavenger hunt where you can jump from location to location, collecting clues and learning about the Milky Way within three kiloparsecs. I am working on an experimental multi-user version of the Starship, which has a whole new dimension. Imagine having a meeting like this, except at Cygnus X aboard a virtual Starship. Science meetings with presentation capabilities have already been held in VR, and meeting aboard a Starship with all sky presentation abilities could uh, make Zoom seem really old fashioned. Elizabeth Tasker, an English astrophysicist who works with JAXA in Japan, kindly gave me a glowing blurb for the app trailer. And the first review in the Meta App Lab was a five-star review, so I think the app is being well received. As you can see from my presentation, uh, Gaia data can be turned into an informative and even beautiful maps and these in turn can be used in posters, animations, games, and VR apps. 
I can continue to create these for Gaia data releases or, or even for your own projects. However, the most important thing is that more people, many more people, see these things. You can help by inviting me out of my coding cave to speak at astronomical events, a professional, amateur, and student. You can also help me develop my board game, posters, and other resources, and also try out the virtual starship and think of ways that it could perhaps be used in teaching or even for remote meetings.